spring has finally sprung. So I'm wearing, oh my God, please ignore the state of my room. This is part of what the video is going to be today. But I'm wearing an outfit and it's fully from Vinted. I'm so happy today, apart from my shoes, obviously. But everything else is from Vinted. The jacket, Vinted. The jumper, Vinted. The dress, because this is a dress, Vinted. And speaking of Vinted, I went and collected another two parcels. So these are the two things that I got. Um, one is hopefully a super oversized pink shirt. Um, it's a size 16, so it should be oversized. And then I just got this brow. I mean, I think it's kind of ugly, but I actually really kind of love it. And it was only three quid and it's in perfect condition. I don't know what the brand is, but I just thought it was kind of practical. Like I've got a bum bags and stuff, but I really wanted um, like a bigger sort of cross body bag, but also not too big, like enough to fit phone, wallet, or a purse, whatever. And some bits like a brolly, you know. But does anyone else think that all vintage stuff like smells the same when it comes out the package? I don't know if everyone just washes it with the same like washing powder, but this obviously doesn't really smell but like these clothes smell the exact same as some of the vintage stuff that i picked up last week and i'm just like what the heck? let's actually properly get into the video and what it's about um obviously starting off with a coffee but basically what you're seeing here yeah this this needs to go to be sorted out i got this new corner desk got rid of a whole ass bed that was in my room all to you know have a cute little setup for like my little business and my jewelry and i really can't say that word properly and like any fashion sewing bits and look at the fucking state of it so yeah essentially this video isn't like properly structured that's why half of it's gonna be voiceover half of me yapping on on the spot but it's kind of like a day in the life of a small business owner who also does work a good 30 plus hours a week uh, but it's just my day off and i'm doing small business things i don't know i enjoy watching these and i'm still trying to figure out how to film everything properly i'm kind of shit at um recording when i'm actually making stuff so i'm just still trying to figure that out but i just thought i don't know maybe you'd enjoy the authentic vibes here so here i'm starting off with just putting away my packaging on like a little shelf on my desk um that's dedicated to my packaging i kind of tried to do things by section but i only had three of these pink crates which i need to go get some more i robbed these from where i keep like a lot of my beads so the rest kind of ended up being disorganized but at least the packaging shelves look nice i don't know how that black shop got all over some of these mail-in bags i'm kind of fuming they also wish i could have more sustainable packaging but with a small business it's a marathon not a sprint and that's just what i've got for now and we will see how we progress at least they are pink and they keep the jewelry very safe small disclaimer also i do really love a clean and organized space i know it doesn't look like it but sometimes it is just really hard balancing however many hours you do a week at work and you know normal things such as washing up making dinner take up a lot of time especially when you're actually making things for a small business also how cute are these stickers i found from when i bought them ages ago i put one inside every order and then these are all my other packaging bits so i think i showed my business cards but thank you oh, oh my great. god i have never been so excited because my business cards and my thank you cards that i designed on canva have arrived oh and it said it was going to take up to eight or ten days, I believe. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I ordered these like three days ago. So they came super fast. And they were £34 for a hundred each. Um, but I chose just to print them with Canva because it had free delivery. And it was just easier to export the files straight from Canva because I designed them on Canva. So let's see. Okay, so these are the thank you cards. They're so cute. I designed multiple colorways, but I think I'm I'm into my pink and red at the moment. So yeah. And then this is the back of it when you flip it. It's got some social tags, Instagram and TikTok in a little <laughs> carrier bag as if you, you know, actually like bought something in a shop. Well, I didn't want it to feel like too professional. I wanted it to be, you know, very professional because it's like a thank you card but i wanted it to be very like cute and feel like you know you're, you're still buying from a small business and just from one of the girlies <laughs> and then these are the business cards i'm thinking maybe if i go put them in some you know coffee shops or if i do any sort of artisan makers markets um anything like that 
I don't know, maybe you're gonna stick with some vintage orders, is that dead cheeky? <laughs> but yeah, it's just super simple. I didn't want anything too complicated. In fact, but it was before, it was without the smiley face before. It was just like that and without the squiggle. And I just added that just to add like, I always think it looks really, like designs look really good with three sort of colors. So obviously the pink, the red, and I just thought the white would make the red pop even more. The only thing is I kind of, I thought I spaced it to be like right in the center, but it looks a little bit higher up, but it's okay. It's only my first batch. And then got just a little tag at the top. Super simple again. These might be a bit confusing, but it just goes like obviously from the top. And I mean, these two are the same. So it's only really those two that are different. And then this QR code just leads straight to my um, Etsy shop. Yeah, if anyone wants a tutorial on how to make these, I think they match really well as well. Like even though it's different writing, like this is a bit more, you know, I wanted this to be a little bit more bold, if that makes sense. And just kind of like easier and more eye-catching, less handwriting. I think it gives off the same vibe. But you can tell it's part of the same company you know <laughs> well same brand like you can tell it's the same sort of brand i mean you could even link these up how cute but yeah that's kind of what i wanted i just wanted them to be the same and then maybe if i ever run out of these if i sell so many things <laughs> which probably won't but if i do then i'll go a different colorway um because i did some blue and creamy yellow kind of European holiday inspired one. Right, thank you cards and then um, any sort of earring backing cards and things like that and please ignore all these bits on the floor. Um, this is just from me like clearing shelves and you know trying to pick up any sort of pieces of wire that I'm not using and just like random uh, elastics I use to keep like what's it called plastic together. Yeah, <laughs> let's just have like 25 million different hobbies. I've got like a candle making fucking kit here that I've had for years. So I'm gonna have to find a space for that because I feel like I should use it at some point. But then here I've got all these kind of like old charms that I used to buy. Um, that probably aren't like the worst of quality, but they probably aren't like <laughs> the stuff that I kind of want to be making now. Yeah, I've just got like proper, proper random bits. Um, I mean, these are probably all from like Timu and stuff, which is absolutely fine, but I do try and make more high quality pieces now. I mean, things like this, they're going to be fine. Um, it's just more sort of like the earring backings and the findings and, and things, and just some of the things are not my style anymore. Um, some of the things are pretty cool, I can't lie. I try to get most of my stuff from Etsy now. Sometimes eBay and like Amazon, it, it depends, but most of it does come from like Etsy. And these are some pre-made earrings as well, which a lot of these I really like. I would just prefer to change the um, the hooks and um, any sort of gold pieces because I do use gold plated things now. Some of these are fucking cute though. <laughs> But yeah, all this stuff, obviously, I don't want to go to waste. So I am obviously going to keep it. I'm just probably going to keep it on, like, this shelf where it's still there. But I kind of, anything that I do use will probably be on top. Right, okay. So that area is, <laughs> I say sorted. It's kind of all just dumped there. But I've literally got no other thing to put it in. And I like to keep it real. And it's not going to be beautifully organised like this little area is um yeah it's gonna look like an absolute fucking tip but what's even more annoying is this absolute fucking tip so i'm gonna have to try and sort this out basically i've got some stuff to hang up here as well i made a video like a few months ago so maybe if you do regularly watch my videos um you might have seen that i bought this little grid hanging thing from ikea as well as this mirror which is still yet to be hung up so yeah i want to hang up my little grid thing pegboard thing here and then I want to hang I got some like little hooks and little kind of bins to put um some of these beads that I use more often in here and then obviously the little hooks I kind of want to um use for any sort of finished 
um bracelets and necklaces and earrings and things because at the moment i'm having difficulty of where to kind of store them and then i think i want to get some shelves like in this location and then also have storage and obviously these boxes cannot stay as much as i love these boxes from ikea they're really good they just fold out and they store so much but anyway let's get back to this we're gonna do it one step at a time it's a marathon not a sprint um i don't run at all so everything to me is a walk so this is a walk well that one i focus on doing today is this area this is everything that i've just kind of tipped out and and had going crazy because i've been making orders and things like that um so i want to just kind of organize madness this sort of area and yeah all right, so I can't really film a lot because I have issues with my iPhone storage and I literally have to delete like 50 times as much as I record every time for some reason. But yeah, this is where we're up to. I don't even know. I just need to get some organisers because everything's kind of just on top of each other and then ha this is how it all ends up here is because I have to take pull that out and then pull that out and then grab this. So I have organised some bits. Like I found some of these little boxes that I've got and I've put bits in them. For now, this is just how we're gonna be. And I don't wanna lose any more sunlight, which I've already kind of lost by doing this. I should have done this last night, actually, after I finished work, but it's all right. Seize the day and all that, it should be fine. I also pulled out this little thing that I could hang at least some of my earrings up on. This is things that I need to redo or finish off or add things to. These are completely finished. And then I usually also have my ring, my desk ring light and my little lamp and stuff there because I can pull my cord through this little thing. And I am just going to stop for a little lunch break, even though it's way past lunch. And this is a very sad looking lunch. I was about to say brunch then. Way past brunch as well. This is not over here, all right? It's a cloudy lemonade from Lidl. I fucking wish. Oh, and I feel like I should explain that this is not buttery. <laughs> it's like triangle cheese which might be actually worse i don't know so this is what i mean by my filming of me making stuff it's not fucking good tell me how i'm filming in portrait what is going on anyway this angle doesn't last long don't worry i kind of realized this and resorted to just filming i, I don't even know it's not the great great it's not the greatest it's not the greatest way to film me making stuff so hopefully i'll uh i'll improve in time so i can film more of these because i think it's quite interesting to to watch and i think you kind of understand i don't know people's prices and people's passion for what they do this way i don't know i just think it's cool to watch but this is sort of just what i do <laughs> I've gone from, you know, going shopping and then on a night out and to the pub and whatnot and a rave on my days off from work when I was at uni to just kind of sitting and drinking tea and um, pottering about making beaded jewellery. So that's different and, and fun, but I'm really enjoying it and I'm really enjoying seeing other people enjoy the things I do too. And it is making little Liv very happy because that is all I ever wanted was... Oh my god, that reminds me of that bass hunter song, what a tune. But literally all I ever wanted since I was little was my own shop, brand, something like that. So hopefully we continue and hopefully I make a few more sales and yeah. I feel like this would also be a good time to mention that I have got my stuff in a physical shop as well. Like how exciting, what the hell. Again, it's just like a dream come true. I mean, it's crazy. I don't know. I just, it's surreal. Like I kind of have my own shop obviously on Etsy, but to be in a physical storefront is just, I think so fucking cool. So I appreciate the opportunity of the owner of the shop. Basically, what I'm doing is a beaded summer vibe charm necklace. So I'm beading, 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 putting one natural um, pearl type bead there. And then I'm putting like another charm and then beading and then the pearl and then a charm. And then the pearls are just there to separate. This is my favourite. I hope you can see that. I'm not used to doing this. <laughs> like, Oh no, I don't think you can see that at all. I'm pretty sure that is the blurriest thing ever. So essentially what I'm doing, this is a bit weird because I'm talking faceless, but it's not quite 
panned down. Also, can you see my Malteser chocolate behind? Yeah, you can. How embarrassing. All I'm doing is hooking a jump ring onto it and then closing it back up. Ow, just trap my skin. I do that about four times a day. That's why it no longer really bothers me. Um, and I'm closing it with two different pliers, one flat head. Oh, there we go. And making sure that it's squeezed together nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is make sure that it's on the correct side, um, cause I've already got another charm on there. So I'm gonna make sure that obviously they're both on the right way round. And then I'm gonna string it through and see if it's happy like if I've closed it well enough ensure that it stays on there have I managed to put the charm on the wrong way around <laughs> all right and then we have both the charms on and the this is why you need one to stop it as well because that has just fell through because the jump rings like a little bit bigger than the bead so then do you know what i'll just take it off and it'll be easier right and then i don't know how well you can see anything because from my perspective this looks absolutely awful <laughs> the lighting there we go okay and that is her complete how many charms we've got together we've got seven charms and it all together all finished off beautiful blue beads and then some little kind of pearl i don't know what to call it segmentation but yeah oh, i love it i hope the sun comes out a little bit more again towards the evening so i can take some nice pictures just made a super simple dinner this is what i would absolutely love about just always working like at home doing you know on your own time as well not being limited to breaks because i have worked at home before but been limited to like 15 minute and half an hour breaks which were just pointless but this is just meant you can take a break and make yourself a nice meal So as you're watching these clips of the lovely things that I made and some from the past few days I've put in the shop already, let me tell you how it all went wrong and how not to get scammed on Etsy. I posted one of the items that I made on my Etsy and I immediately got a notification. It was a message from Shop Helper by Etsy. Now I like to think of myself as a bit clued up, you know, seeing as we all in our generation grew up with, with social media, digital media and scammers and all that sort of stuff. But this looked so legit and also so it wouldn't be the first time that I had any sort of issues or messages from Etsy about verifying and payment methods and that sort of thing. So I get these instructions coming through and I think I must have hit you know, a certain amount of listings where they wanted to verify me again as a seller. Which, again, as mentioned, this would not be the first of its kind. I had a payment reserve on my Etsy account for the first three months and I had to verify my payment methods twice, which was all completely legit to the point where I was speaking to Etsy customer support and they were like, no, this is legit. This is what we do. So I click through and I follow these instructions and it prompts me to enter card details and it takes me to another site, which by the way, just looked like Etsy. And sadly i get a notification from my bank account on my mobile banking app saying that i requested a payment for 400 pounds now i am a broke bitch i that was like pretty much my whole balance so obviously i went onto my mobile banking app and said that i did not request the payment and that it was a fraudulent payment or you know attempt but sadly the bank phone lines were closed at this time so i couldn't even get through to anyone to actually discuss the situation of course i froze and blocked my card so i had to wait until the next morning to basically just request a new card and that no money had been taken out which was luckily confirmed i know this may sound really really silly and you may be like laughing your head off thinking what an idiot how did you almost get scammed like that but trust me it's easier than you might think these places that do this on etsy and paypal they make websites look like 
the website that you're so used to seeing and they make it look very convincing. As I mentioned, I'd had issues with Etsy before with verification and with payment methods. So this was not out of the blue. They know what they're doing. Okay, to finish off, this is a completely new day. I visited a maker's market nearby and bought a little print from a shop which is really cute it's because i didn't want to leave this on a very like depressing traumatic stressful note and videos of me crying and here's me doing some shopping for some charms and some bits a website called nicole de bruyne which i actually found on ebay then bought off her on etsy and then she actually gave me a code to use on her website but yeah highly recommend and i really hope that you enjoyed this vlog and if you'd like to see some more stuff like this in the future then please just let me know in the comments below because i really enjoyed making it and hopefully i'll get better at filming these soon <laughs>